Hi everyone and welcome to the Cookie Knits channel. My name is Ira and I'm your host here. I'm coming to you from a very hot and sunny Sydney um, in Australia and I'm mostly a knitter and I occasionally cross stitch and dabble in a little bit of other crafts. Um, welcome if it's your first time on my channel and if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for patiently waiting for the next video and welcome back. Um, today's gonna uh, is a little bit of a different video. So today is going to be my wrap up and quick review of all of the knitting that I've done in 2022. <laughs> um, I'm filming just before I have to head out for a little event. So I'm hoping that I can get all of it done today. Otherwise, if you see a quick little outfit change where I'm just in pajamas, you know that it's a different day because I'm I don't sit like this at home. Okay, so my wrap-up of 2022. First of all, I would like to say thank you so much to everybody who's joined me on my YouTube journey this year. 2022 has been a big year for me. I got married, I started my YouTube channel. All of these things bring me a lot of happiness. So I'm so glad that you guys um, are a part of that for me. And um, I just wanted to go through my 2022 knits as there's a few knits uh, from before I started my channel. So I'll talk a little bit of uh, in in I'll talk a little bit in depth about those knits and just sort of very very shortly about the other knits that I've already shown on my podcast episodes before. So I am only going to be going through garments and shawls, but overall I finished 19 garments and shawls this year, 10 little accessories or hats or baby knits. I have one object that I frogged and I still have about six whips on my needles and one un, like UFO that's just, that's just chilling. <laughs> so that's my update of the 2022 um, stats wise, which is quite interesting. So let's begin. My first knit of the year was the Wuthering Heights sweater by, <laughs> oh no, <laughs> it's French. Le Tricoteurs Volants. Le tri Tricoteurs Volants. I'll put it on the screen. Which is a beautiful cabled men's jumper. Um, hopefully I've got a little bit of footage of my husband in it and I have knit this in some yarn I found at the thrift shop or the op shop and I think it's Bendigo Woolen Mills 8 ply classic because it has that crepe spin to it if you've seen the Bendigo yarn and the yarn came in hanks, but I got told that back in the day it used to come in hanks. So I think it's quite an old Bendigo Woolen Mills. And it has this beautiful center cable. And this center cabling also on the saddle shoulder. So this was my first ever saddle shoulder construction. And then the cable runs down the arms on both sides. And there's a cute little twisted cable which forms sort of the waist seam. Hopefully I've got a little bit of footage of my husband that you can sort of see it on. I really, really like this pattern. I did end up putting it down for a little while because, you know, every single row on the sleeve as well as the body, you had to pay attention to which row you are on the chart. So as always, towards the end of the year, my knitting <laughs> tends to move into sort of simpler knitting because work is super busy and I find Christmas very, very stressful. So I had put this down for a while and then I picked it back up and finished it early in the year this year. My husband loves wearing this. He looks great in it. So I would highly recommend this pattern. I think it's a beautiful, detailed, but still very classic men's sweater. So this is the Wuthering Heights sweater. Then my second finished object was my Nordic Nights pullover by Jen Steingas. 
Um, oops, that's the back. Nordic Nights pullover. in the colorway Ashfold Heather and Cream and it's a beautiful it's a beautiful sweater it looks great on I love the cuffs and it being a four ply sweater is very lightweight and comfortable and easy to wear under coats I am however finding it a little bit snug fit um, I had this issue early in the year where I knit another sweater with like sort of almost negative ease with an older measurement <laughs> and um, I had increased in my bust circumference by about four centimeters so I think because of that it's just a touch snug around here not uncom not uncomfortably so and being knitwear is quite stretchy but um, if I was to remake this I would definitely make it a size up my next finished object is the Manti Shawl by Naomi Endicott and I think she's one of the new owners of um, Espastrico and I've knit this in Drops Lima in the colorway Ruby Red which is such an odd name for this color because that's not Ruby Red whatsoever and Gray which is a correct name <laughs> so it you start off knitting this gray section and making just these classic stock in it triangles I found the instructions for the increase was really confusing until I realized it was just like a raglan and then you do short rows kind of in this garter section and then pick up for this little ruffled edge so the way the pattern is written you pick up for the stitches for this ruffle all along the must be along the garter I'm sorry I don't remember whether it was on the garter or the gray section but you pick up for stitches all along the garter bumps and then in the immediate next row you do increases like a make one right or make one left and quite can't quite recall which one it was um, to start the ruffles and I found that section quite confusing because you haven't knitted the previous row so I was just sort of reaching down and picking up any any string I could find from the edge of the garter section so that was a bit confusing but anyways this shawl is one of my most worn knits for sure it's just very comfortable. I usually just wear it around like this under an open coat. So it's nice and comfy. I like it. Manti Shawl by Naomi Endicott. Okay. Sorry about the change in lighting. It's very sunny. I get sun coming in through the balcony and my feet are on fire. My next finished object is the Magnolia Bloom by Camilla Vad. in Drops Nepal in the colorway blush and the Drops Kid Silk in the colorway light pink. This is one of my most favorite knits to date. I love um, wearing this. It's a great fit. It's very comfortable. I did however hate, hate doing the bubbles. <laughs> um, the 
I don't know, whenever you're holding yarn double with more hair, I find bobbles so much harder because it just doesn't have the flexibility to knit like five stitches but they're like knit front, back front, back twice or whatever like I, I just can't get my needle in so other than the bobbles I really love this jumper I wouldn't mind having it in a couple of colors but I feel like I say that all the time and I don't know if I ever knit if I'll knit it <laughs> Okay, now we're coming up to the knits that you guys have already seen on my channel before so I'm just going to quickly go through them and let you know if I wear it and if I would knit another one and how useful I find these in my day-to-day -day life. So this is my secret summer secret top by Jessie Made Designs. This one is knit in three cat yarns in her soft sock in the colorway duck egg which is a beautiful blue gray and like brown speckles just like a duck egg it's in the name I decided to go with the tieable straps so that I could I guess mostly to counteract the stretchiness of knitted fabric as straps I wouldn't have to keep going back and shortening them um, I haven't worn this much or at all for no other reason other than I don't have any bottoms <laughs> I didn't anyways um, have any bottoms that I felt that comfortable wearing with a top this cropped now I have a couple of jeans but I still picture wearing this over like a white t-shirt so it'll be more for cold weather um, knit which I won't be wearing it for a while. A cold Australian summer. A cold Australian weather knit. Um, sort of under a jacket with like jeans and a t-shirt and the knit top on top. I think would be very cute. Then my next finished object is the Botanical Yoke Pullover. And this was, this was in the first um, podcast I ever um, filmed. It's still one of my favorite knits I've ever made. I knit this in Holt Super Soft in the colorway Almond Held Double. Um, the only thing I find is when I wear it, which I wear it very often because I really like the yarn and I like the pattern and I like the length of it over pants, um, is that because the cable section is so tight, if I shrug my shoulders and stuff, it sort of tends to go up and I need to pull it down. And I think part of it is because of the yarn substitution choice I made. The original is um, a Pearl Soho design and it's designed for a Pearl Soho like merino cashmere type of yarn which I think is just more drapey whereas I've gone for 100% wool um, which I kind of like though. I like that it's not got any pilling. I like the stitch definition in the cables and the ribs but the only bad side is because it's a sturdier fabric it'll tend to like pop up off my shoulder and I apparently am a person that talks a lot with my shoulders <laughs> so that's the botanica yoke pullover I absolutely love it and I still stand by, by my decision that I would never I would never knit this again <laughs> Then my next finished object is the Anchor Summer Tea by Petite Knit. I 
knit this in the drops bell. Sorry, I can't find the front and the back. Oh, yeah, okay. Drops bell in the colorway mauve. It's a eight ply yarn. It's a cotton linen and viscose blend. And I have been wearing this a lot as well. The only alteration I've done so, f the only modification I made was that I added short rows under the yoke here in the back just to raise the back up. I really need to put labels in this one and the Magnolia Bloom because they both have short rows under the yoke in the back and I really struggle to tell which is the front and the back. But anyways, let me see if I had any more feedback for it. No? Really like this pattern, would totally make another few more. That's the thing about petite knits patterns, they're so wearable, they're so wearable. Really, really like this one. Then my next finished object is the Purpurea Sweater by Teddy Lutzak. Newton in the colorway for Stina. You guys, the day that I was wearing and doing like the b-roll footage was such a hot day and I nearly died in this sweater. <laughs> so the sweater itself is very light and airy. I do like wearing it but I find the fabric very scratchy. So I do wear it with a turtleneck underneath and because of how the neck is, it's the neckline is quite high and I'm wearing a turtleneck, I can't wear it on even like moderately cold days. I need to wear it on really, really, really cold days because as soon as I warm up a little bit and I start feeling claustrophobic and I can feel the prickle even through the turtleneck when I get really hot. So I love the pattern. I love the um, split hem detail, it's beautiful. I love the cables. I just don't like the yarn, but that's okay. I think this is one that I actually might make in another yarn that I find more comfortable next to skin because I think I think I would wear it so so often. So this is the Porporia, which you guys have also seen before. Then my next knit is my confetti. <laughs> That's what I call it, but it's the Cumulus Tea by Petite Net. I like this knit. It's knit in the Multicolor Donegal Nep Sock, which is an undyed yarn base. I got mine from Fiber Art Shed, but a lot of indie dyers use this to dye yarn, so you can find it in different colors, especially from Joka Momo Textiles here in Sydney. She has them. Um, like, I love the fit. I like the knit. I should have made it longer, but that's another problem, and I think I can totally envision myself making a few of these in actually winter yarns because this was a great like under a jacket for me whereas this even in a summer yarn I think would be too hot for me to actually wear in summer in Australia. So Cumulus Tea by Petite Knit. And then my and then my next project was a test knit I did for Lily Cake France and this was called the Abydos Top. I knit this in Fibro Natura cotton wood, which was the one on the body here, in the colorway one no four one one five one, and the mohair was the Creme Kiss Silky Kid in dusty pink. 
This one, actually, I would consider a summer knit because I wore it in Manila. It's very humid and it's all right. I didn't feel too bad. I love, 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 love this pattern. I want to make more in the summer version as well as she has the full sleeve version to knit in wool for winter. And I, I just, I love how beautiful this um, collar feature looks. So I'm very happy with this uh, project. I wear it quite often. You guys, it is so hot <laughs> on, on my leg. I have like one of my blocking mats here trying to block some of the sun. I don't think it's working very well. Okay. My next finished object is the Orealis by Jennifer Steingas as well. I went with the roll neck version and I've knit this in the Western Yorkshire Spinners Jacob 100% Jacobs in the colorway brown black and the Bendigo Woolen Mills Bloom in the colorway red ochre. So it's a color changing yarn and that's what sort of made this beautiful yoke um, feature. I find this yarn a little bit prickly too so I need to wear this with a turtleneck as well but I love how the sweater looks it actually looks really nice on top of a couple of dresses I have and similar as to the Nordic Knights I think I just chose the wrong size so it's a little bit snug but that's okay if I remake it I'll remake it a bigger size but it's so beautiful this is the Orealis and then my next object is the Felix cardigan by Amy Christophers. this out of gifted yarn from my friend and it was the Peace Fleece Worsted in the colorway Zaria Fog, Bonnie Blue Gap and Antarctic White. Um, I really like the yarn, I love the colors, my only downside is that the collar, collar is huge. Um, I have enough of the white left over so I didn't want to redo it as I, it, I did a sewn bind off and it took forever, but it's just, it's just too big. So I think I'm going to have to undo it, re-pick up the neckline, fewer stitches, smaller needle, and just do a normal bind off. So hopefully I'll get around to altering that sometime soon. On my notes it says the collar is big but I'm okay with it but as I'm talking to you I'm not okay with it. I would like this to be a bit more wearable so I'll, I'll be altering that. My next project is the Necessity Jumper by Katrina Walzer. The Feel Good Yarn by We Are the We Wool and the Gangs. <laughs> Wool and the Gang in the colorway Eucalyptus Green, which is the slight green on top, and Forest Green, which is the darker green on the bottom. And it has this beautiful cable detail on the sleeve. 
as well as on the underarm. Hopefully you've already seen that in the B-roll footage. And I have no, no feedback other than I really like it. The yarn is soft. It's beautiful. I love the way shaping detail that Kat's put into the pattern. It's very flattering. Love it. Would make again. Feel good jumper. No, that's not what it is. Necessity. The necessity jumper in feel good yarn. I also have a few FOs that I don't have with me as they were gifted or given away. Beginning with the Outline Tee by Jessie Made Designs. And I knit this for my friend and my bridesmaid as a thank you for organizing my hands. So I'm going to pop a picture of it in here. I knit this in the color, in the Holst Coast yarn, which is I think 55% uh, lamb's wool, 45% cotton in the colorway. Borion, Borion, I'll put it on the screen. <laughs> and I knitted hell single and makes a really light, really beautiful fabric. So I would totally make another one of these. I love the outline um, tank as well as the T patterns. I haven't knit the tank yet, but I just I can tell I like it. Um, so that's one that is a finished object that I don't have on me. And the other one that I finished that I don't have on me is the 7pm tank by Tiffany Kai. I knit this in the Joko Momo Textiles Platinum Sock Base in the colorway Lavender Field and I knit it for my sister. And here's a picture of her, you guys have seen this before. And I can't give you any feedback on it, but my sister hasn't said anything bad, so I think she likes it. And I like the fit of it. The knitting was fun and an interesting construction. And the only alteration I had to make was that I had to go back and redo the straps because they were too long, as the straps, I think, always are. The last finished object that I have that's not with me here is the Aosta sweater. And this is a pattern by Sophie Hemmings, who is the Knit Pearl Girl. I've knit the Aosta pattern before for my aunt, and my cousin took it from my aunt, so I guess for my cousin. And this uh, version was knit in the Knit Fix Wool of the Andes Bulky, which is a 12 ply superwash base in the colorway Aurora Heather, which I think is the exact color of the dress I'm wearing, actually. <laughs> And I knit this for my friend as her wedding gift and she loves it. I actually have a picture of her in it somewhere so if I can find it I'll pop it in. And she 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 loves it and she loves the fit of it. So that's um, the Aosta is a very dependable, really fast, very cute gift knit sweater. And then the next finished object that I have, which I have with me here, is the Lone Skein Shawl by Hohi Locatelli. in the Glen Heaven Knits BFL Cashmere Silk Sock Base um, in the colorway Make It A Double which is this beautiful cream with like purple specks. I do actually wear this shawl a lot more than I thought I would. Not as a shawl as such. Again I wear it with my work coat and I just sort of tie it like that on the neck. And it just gives a little bit of warmth in where the coat is open. Because my coat, that coat doesn't button. Um, so, yeah. Cute little shawl, though I wouldn't knit it again. I didn't enjoy the process too much, but I really love the yarn. Yeah, I really love the yarn and I'm glad I have this piece in my closet. And the next finished object is the one that took <laughs> forever. And that is the Twist and Turns Shawl by Stephen West.
I've knit this in three cat's yarns. Um, it's 100% merino base, but she doesn't offer this base anymore. But she does have these um, colors in any base in her store. The pink is called rose pink. And the green is called mossy green. And the speckled white is called calico. And I only just recently finished this in November and the weather finally has heated up in Australia. So I haven't been wearing it, I haven't worn it as much, but I have been wearing it sort of on the couch if I need a little bit of warmth just because it's been next to me the whole time. I really like wearing it like this. Like I love this, the white sort of feature, this like geometric feature that draws your eyes up to the person's face and it's really really cute so I think I will get a bit of wear out of it um, wearing it more like a like a cloak rather than wrapping it as a shawl and that's my yeah that's my sh um, shawl what's it called oh yeah the West Knits MK <laughs> twists and turns as you can see, I only went for the little eye cord in the cables, in the alternate cables. I kind of really like that feature as well. Yeah, I think I'll get use out of this project. I'm happy with it overall. And then my last finished object for the year, unless I miraculously finish something in the next couple of days, is the Felt Spa Tea by Hannah Lubbin or Hannah Herb Garden. Uh, Herb Garden Knitwear on Instagram. knit out of Wool in the Gang 10 ply Bima Cotton in the colorway Olive and I really really enjoyed this knit I really really enjoyed this pattern I'm finding that the 10 ply cotton is again more for autumn or spring knit or in winter under a jacket type of weight for me to wear here on a hot day so I'm really interested to try and make this in the yarn that the pattern is actually written for which is the Sadness Garden Lynn I think that would make a beautiful fabric. Yeah, so that's my last, that's my last finished object of the year. Uh, I apologize if I seem a bit rushed. The sun is shining and my legs are going to be 10 shades darker because it's so sunny here. I think you can see it. But um, I just wanted to pop in and sort of go through and make the video. And I hope you enjoyed watching it. And thank you so much for watching. Uh, me throughout this year. I hope you guys have had a good Christmas or a good holiday season um, or happy Hanukkah, whatever you celebrate or if you don't celebrate anything, hope you've had a little bit of free time and time to spend with your family or friends or doing something you enjoy and um, looking forward to the new year, to all the new things and I'll see you guys probably in the new year. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. I'll see you next time.